In this video, I'll show you how to build the panoramic head that allows 360 degree horizontal rotation and 90 degree up and down vertical rotation for a full 360 180 panorama. Okay, let's take the uh, pano head apart real quickly. Now we have it apart. Let's put it together slowly. Let's start off with the base. This is what holds it onto the tripod. On the bottom we have a quick disconnect plate in Arca style. We also have a 5 16 inch bolt and that is snugged up against the quick disconnect plate so that it's easy to work on from the top. We also have a threaded insert here which is a quarter twenty that goes all the way through and the mounting screw for the quick disconnect plate screws into that and holds it tight. And then this whole thing mounts onto the tripod. When we're assembling this, we put on a fender washer first and that helps keep the wood from denting. Then we put on a 5 16 inch washer and these washers are actually quarter inch washers that have been drilled out to 5 16 We did that so that the inner race of this bearing rests on that washer and that way the bearing center race turns freely when we're rotating this around the horizontal axis. So then we drop our bearing in we have two bearings, one will be on the bottom and one on the top. So now we have to look at the horizontal base support. We have a hole in the bottom of that which fits the bearing that we just put on there. And that bearing will sit just slightly above the wood. We have the same thing on top. And these holes were drilled with a Forstner bit because it has a flat bottom and we want the bearing to rest flat on our wood. And the reason we use wood is it's easy to work with. In addition to that I have a little piece of foam rubber here. It's pretty dense foam rubber and I use that as a drag so I slip that over the bearing here. And that way it keeps the horizontal rotation from being very loose so you don't have to tighten it down you just rotate it to the position you want and it will stay there. And we mount our horizontal base on that. Make sure that everything is pushed up tight. Put our top bearing into that hole. And then I made a small protractor. It's divided up into major divisions of 45 degrees and minor divisions of 15 degrees. And that's adequate for most of the things that I do. So we slip that on there. On top of that we put another quarter inch washer that's been drilled out to 5 16 And on top of that we have a 5 16 acorn nut. And then we just snug that up. It doesn't have to be terribly tight. And I have some little marks on the thing. Pencil mark right there. And I try to line up the red major division with that mark. Okay. And that's pretty snug now. So that will rotate around the base that mounts onto the tripod and as I rotate it these marks realign with the mark that I have on the base. Okay. Next what we want to do is fasten our vertical arm onto the vertical support and I used a quarter inch Q 
carriage bolt for that, and the carriage bolt has a square uh, flange on it, so there's a square cutout in the wood behind that carriage bolt, and that keeps it from turning on this side, so that when I tighten the nut on the other side, I don't have to hold that in place. So then we just put our tightening knob on there, and that will hold it firmly in place. On the vertical arm, I've put a quick release adapter, and it's important that you put this on first so that when you're measuring distances, your camera is mounted into that to measure the base distance from the base of the camera to this rotation point. You'll see that in the video a little bit later. Let's take a little closer look at the bearing and the holes into which those mount. The bearings are uh, skateboard bearings, so they're easy to find. The center hole is about 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, so a 5 sixteenths inch bolt works just fine. And the inner race of the bearing is right here, and when we mount this, we have a washer sitting on top of that race, so it doesn't touch the outside of the bearing, and that allows the whole mechanism to move freely. The hole into which those bearings go in our base right here was cut with a Forstner bit, and a Forstner bit cuts a flat bottom. So the bottom of that hole allows the bearing to sit flat. The center hole was cut out so that the inside race doesn't touch the wood. So when we drop that bearing in there, it sits just a little above the wood, and then on top of that we have a washer. And we have the same structure on the bottom. I'll turn this over. You can see that we have that same structure on the bottom. And into that we would put our bottom bearing. So there are two bearings, and when the 5 16 inch bolt goes through those, it holds the rotating horizontal base very stable. Two critical measurements that we need to make are the nodal distance and the distance from the base of the camera to our horizontal rotation center. This is the setup that we're going to use to find what the nodal distance of the camera is. The camera is mounted rigidly on one tripod mount and the rail is mounted on a second tripod mount. The rail will rotate around the pan center of the second tripod mount. We start with the pegs lined up. You can see the front peg right here, the back peg dark in the back, much narrower than the front even though they're the same size. And then we rotate our rail so that the uh, camera that we're trying to get the measurement on, move side to side. And you can see that back peg move to the right there and to the left there. What we have to do is move the camera back and forth until we get that not to move at all so that those two pegs remain aligned. So we'll get them aligned again. I know that the camera is too far forward right now so I'm going to slide it backward a little ways. And then we'll move about the same amount. So we'll rotate back and forth again. Notice that we have less motion this time. So we'll slide it back some more. Let's get them lined up. Slide back further. Okay, we're getting closer. We move from side to side and the back peg almost stays in line with the front peg. So let's slide it back a little bit more. Okay, now when we rotate the camera from side to side, the back peg and the front peg stay in the almost exact same position. 
we could probably come back just a shade more but not too much once you get to the point where you have no relative motion between the front and back peg you can measure the distance between the center of the back mount and the pan rotation center of the front mount and that's your nodal distance the next distance we want to measure is the base of the camera to the center of the lens it's best to do this measurement on a rough cut base with the camera mounted on the vertical support arm as shown here so the easiest way to get the distance from your base of the camera to where you want your rotation point on the base of the panoramic mount is just look through the camera center the camera on the uh, mount and draw a pencil line in the center And that will be where your drill has to go. Once you've got all your critical measurements made, finish drilling your holes for the bearings, mount your bubble level if you want to have one, and assemble all the parts, and you now have a great panoramic head. I haven't shown you all the measurements of the arms because that will vary depending on the camera you use, but it's pretty easy to figure them out just based on your camera size. Once you have everything assembled and your camera is mounted, when you rotate either vertically or horizontally, the camera lens will rotate around the nodal center of the lens. This eliminates parallax and allows you to stitch panoramic images together much more easily. Here's a 360 degree panorama. It was turned into a little planet image. It was shot using the pano head you've just seen. Here's the same panorama created as a web page and this one allows us to move around zoom in, zoom out This panoramic head is easy to build. It's made from very inexpensive materials and will give you excellent results in the images you create, which are easily stitched together with a variety of software. Thank you for viewing, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel.